first meeting, a career-high 23 points and 11 rebounds in that one. Well, it's a bit of a difference for Marquette. Obviously, we got so used to seeing Isaiah Blockton, the teacher Heidemann, Danielle King, Davenport, Amani Wilmot. The list goes on, right? These players who spent four seasons at Marquette and started essentially every game all four years. Well, now this season, Marquette is getting 40% of their scoring from freshmen. Right, but I, I think what's under underrated a little bit is that they have three players who played significant roles last year. Selena Lott, Lauren Van Clunen, and Isabel Spingola all contributed in big moments. So it's not a completely bare cupboard for this Golden Eagles team. The first one didn't quite go Seton Hall's way. So today, Tony Bazella told us his three keys. Transition defense, rebounding, and he said, you know what, we got to make double the threes that Marquette drops tonight. Right, we already mentioned it. They were one of 12 from deep in their last game versus Nova. They've been streaky shooting. At times, they look great. They've hit as many as 14 in a game, and then there's times like the other night. But so far, they've been turning over Marquette on the other end. Three turnovers already for Marquette. Inside to Elmore. Syracuse transfer in her second season. Left it short and scooped up by Van Clunen. And a foul underneath against Seton Hall. And it goes against Femi Funes, who has checked in for Alexia Alesh, who already has two fouls. And Tony Bazella said, you know, Alesh, who played a season-high 24 minutes against Villanova over the weekend, would be big tonight. Now she's already on the bench. Less than halfway through the first quarter. And Seton Hall has to be careful now because outside of Alesh, outside of Funis, they don't have a lot of size. They have Shadid, they have Desiree, who are technically forwards for this team, but they're not as as big and as strong as Funis and Alesh. So Funis has to make sure she doesn't get that second. Samuels on the kick out. And Lewis knocks down another. That's her second. And just like that, Seton Hall has tripled the amount of threes they hit in their last game against Villanova. The Seton Hall team that has been shooting 38% from downtown in four of their last five games, which resulted in wins. Lot shot clock winding down. And a little topsy-turvy two-point shot goes down. She has six. You're seeing her ability to get to the rim so far. She's gotten fouled. She's gotten to the free throw line. You have to try and contain her penetration. Out of bounds on Marquette. It'll stay here. Mott can do it in so many ways. Right. That time just a little bit of a hesitation. I don't know how she finished that one, to be honest. Her back was almost to the basket, but she's got length. She's got long arms, her ability to lay it up high on the glass. Lewis off the inbounds pass, rattles it down. Three for three from distance. And she was a big focus of the Marquette shoot-around, not losing her, getting over the top of screens, and so far... Marquette has not put enough pressure on her on the catch. Lott walked with it. That is the fourth turnover in this quarter. So far, a couple of those keys for Tony are going well. They're knocking down threes. They're turning over Marquette, which is leading them to get out in transition. Now they just need to work on those rebounds. Lewis trying to feed Samuels into the hands of Spingola. Pops in transition. And she won't miss too many of those. Home run pass to Samuels. A chance at the three-piece. Back and forth we go at Walsh Gym. The stars are heating up Kim Adams, and they came to play so far tonight. Well, Alexis Lewis, she has found her jumper. She is three for three from deep, knocking them down from everywhere, giving her team a three-point lead early. Shadeen Samuels, though, getting the work done inside.
Sunday was an exciting time for both teams. First, Marquette in comeback fashion, a buzzer beating two point turnaround hook from Lauren Van Clunen to take down the Blue Jays 52 50. Then on the East Coast, Shadeen Samuel said, Overtime? I don't think so. Collecting the loose ball rebound and putting it home, finishing off a sweet 25 in a season high for Shadeen Samuel. Both teams playing great basketball right now, Kim. And it pays to have talent, but it also pays to be a little bit lucky sometimes down the stretch. Right, and both of those teams had comeback wins. Marquette had been trailing by 13 at halftime against Creighton. Seton Hall was down by as many as 13 and late in the third quarter. And I was on the call for that one. I thought we were for sure going into <laughs> overtime. And then Shadeen said, you know what, Kim? You can go home and get a little early lunch today. Thank you, Shadeen. Shadeen had to get home and get to study on a Sunday with class on Monday. Anderson coughs it up, keeps it alive in the corner. Find a shoot, Spingola. Lewis fouled, and it goes against Cameron Taylor. And back to the Pirates. Your impressions of the first five minutes. Well, I think we just saw it right there. Seton Hall has absolutely brought the pressure on defense. Everything they've gotten on offense has started on the defensive end and the momentum they've built. And when we talked to Coach Duffy from Marquette this morning, she said we need to tell our players to expect that and to be able to answer back from the pressure and any adversity that we'll face early on in this raucous environment. Well, Seton Hall is certainly clicking on all cylinders. Five made baskets on five assists. And that's where they're playing their best. This is a team that just about at their five starters, Barbara Johnson coming off the bench today, but they have five players averaging very close to 10 points per game. A lot of scoring weapons on this Pirates team. Freshman on freshman up top. Jordan King. Lauren Park Lane, a couple of names you'll hear a lot over the next few seasons in the Big East. Yeah, I think both of them have been overshadowed a little bit because of how incredible Maddie Segrist at Villanova has played. He tops the Big East in scoring and rebound. Samuels right to the rack and off the mark. And another Marquette turnover. That's their fifth. Seton Hall is bringing the pressure. They're in their face. Hands are up, communicating. They have them frazzled right now. Samuel Stepper rejected. But they caught her on the body. And the foul goes against Marquette. Golden Eagles on a five-game win streak. Look at that scoring margin. Nearly 16 points. And I'll tell you what, they've already been one of the most efficient teams in the league, which has really helped the fact that they turn it over so much. You know, this is a team that won on Sunday despite 17 turnovers. But it's because the shots that they're taking are usually going in. And they're also the best rebounding team in the Big East. All right, and we talked to Coach Duffy this morning. What about this group? What have they bought into that she brought in her first season? And she just said... Like you mentioned earlier, more than any team she's been around, they have the ability to bounce back. She said they're also just great kids. Whatever she tells them she needs from them, I need more scoring from you, I need more rebounding. They are in the gym working on that. A big scrum for the rebound. Jump ball, it'll stay right here. Jasmine Smith checking in for the Pirates, as is Maya Jackson. I have a newfound love for where Jasmine Smith came from, a transfer from Trinity Valley Community College in Texas, which I now know from watching the Netflix documentary <laughs> Cheer, one of the top cheerleading programs in America. Lots. Off the mark. Murata, Johnny on the spot. And we haven't seen much of that yet. Marquette, you mentioned, known for their offensive rebound. Murata off the bench providing an instant impact. Funis off the mark, Murata corrals. Murata's an interesting player, the sophomore from Wisconsin, 
started the first 12 games, but then they wanted to shift the personnel a little bit. They needed that spark off the bench. They felt like she could give it to them. And she's embraced that role now coming off the bench over the last nine games. Absolutely, and one of their top rebounders, somebody who just all out goes for the ball on both ends as we've seen her do. Now she's got the ball with four seconds. Murata driving wild and off the mark. Lewis, baseline. Soft hook goes. Alexis Lewis, she is scorching four of four from the field. Her first three have been threes. That time a nice pump fake. Kind of got the defense sleeping all the way around the other side. And then a nice little pull up. Daring Lubo to shoot. And instead it's a travel, the sixth turnover on Marquette. Shadeen Samuels comes back in for the Pirates. So far, so good for Tony Bazella's team. Forcing turnovers, scoring in transition. And Lewis has been huge. And really, you look at her last five games, she's been balling. 16 and a half points per game for the transfer from Iona. That's what Shadeen Samuel does. That cannot happen if you're Marquette. Shadeen Samuels was the only white jersey in that paint. There were about three Marquette players just standing. Not one person pushed her out or attempted to go after that ball. And a foul goes against Smith. Six-point lead for the Pirates, the largest of the game. Marquette's one for their last five. But Lott goes to the line for the third time already in this game. And that's something you want to do when you're having a hard time getting into your sets. Scoring is get to the free throw line. Something that this team is very capable of doing. There were a ton of free throw trips for both teams at the first meeting about a month ago. Turnovers and free throws have been the Achilles heel for Marquette this season. They are one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the conference, but Selena Lott, six for six in this first quarter. Under a minute to go. No. Samuels dumps it down to Funis. And through traffic, got it to go. And if they could ever get her scoring, that would be a big lift. She was out last year with an injury, starting to work her way back, only averaging three points per game, but that would be a lift off of the bench and some more size that they could count on. King off the mark. Samuels corrals. Shot clock turned off for the Pirates. And I'd like to see him go, go to Shadeen here. Let her attack. Jackson slips it down to Lewis on the baseline. He faked us all out there. It worked. Alexis Lewis with a game-high 13 points in the first quarter. She is the reason the Hall is on top. 22-14 here at home.
Alexis Lewis is averaging 12 and a half points per game. Kim, she's got 13 through one quarter. She loves to shoot the threes. Her percentage on the season hasn't been great, just about 30%, but today, Matt, she's batting 1,000. <laughs> for three from three, getting it done on both ends, hands all over her defender, picking up those steals. She has been the spark for this team. Look at that, three threes, three steals, 13 points. Alexis Lewis has been money. Lewis came over from Iona College, had to sit out last year due to transfer rules. And uh, playing really well over this late stretch. We told you averaging 16 and a half points over the last four. And has really taken on a leadership role for this team who is battling for a bye in the first round of the conference tournament. Spingola off the mark. And there is Lewis tracking it down. Well, we talked to Coach Pizella about her, and he said she was horrific the last time <laughs> they played Marquette. And he said when they got back from that road trip, he arranged a meeting with her and just to figure out what was going on. Am I being too hard on you? And she took full ownership. She said, it's on me. I need to get better. And he really had a lot of positive things to say about her character and how she has really rebounded from that weekend and that game against Marquette. Marquette is one for their last seven. After starting the game three for six. A big part of it, Matt, they are face guarding Selena Lott. Right now it's Barbara Johnson on her. They are following her every move, and you can tell she is visibly frustrated early. Samuels driving, draws the foul. On the seventh Marquette turnover. And Samuels will head to the strike. And Seton Hall has been relentless in the pressure, just like Shadid Samuels has been relentless attacking the glass early in this game. Villanova defended Selena Lott really well in that first half on Sunday. Lott was held scoreless in that first half. Scored all 15 of her points in the second frame. And this is the part of the season where Megan Duffy told us Selena Lott is having to learn how to adapt to teams defending her in different ways because she is atop the scouting report. Right, and, and right now her teammates also need to recognize that because when one of your teammates is being face guarded, you want to take advantage of that because that's one less player on the floor that can now help. So you want to attack that side, you want to drive, you want to feed the post because you know that no help is coming from whoever is guarding Selena Lott. Meanwhile, Seton Hall on a 10-2 run. And this 10-point lead, the largest of the night, and now they pick up the full-court pressure. And now it's Maya Jackson on her. You just watch, she's trailing her everywhere and has her back completely turned to the rest of the activity. Anderson defended by Elmore. Nowhere to go with it. And Anderson gets the soft touch off the back of the rim. And that time they did what we just talked about. They had Lott in the corner almost as a decoy and fed it into Anderson on that side of the post, knowing that no help was coming for her. Park Lane walled off. Elmore. Tipped back out. Shot clock did not reset. Samuels left open. Here comes Claire Kafis. Anderson corrals. Second chance now for Marquette. And an offensive foul. The charge taken by Desiree Elmore. And Matt, I thought Lauren Van Clunen should have just shot the ball when she caught it. She was wide open in the middle of the paint. Instead, dribbled right into traffic. And now gets an offensive foul call. Lewis and Samuels combining for 20 points. Back inside to Samuels. Lost her footing. And a jump ball sends it back. No, it stays right here with Seton Hall. Shadeen Samuels is such a tough matchup because she moves very well without the ball. She's used to being the focus of the defense, so she's gotten very creative in how she gets open and is constantly working for position. Samuels going right through the beat of the defense. And that's been her 
go to as of late as well. Attacking from that elbow, the simple jab step, an explosion. And now Park Lane picks the pocket of Kephas and all the way to the cup. And a timeout taken by Megan Duffy. Seton Hall is fired up. Tony Bazella feeling it. He told us he had challenged Park Lane for some more scoring. Seton Hall getting it done. Defense to offense. The freshman point guard, Lauren Park Lane. Pirates up 12. Back in New Jersey, Seton Hall on top of the Golden Eagles 28-16. Big reason why Shadeen Samuels, who already has nine points. And Kim, her career just keeps getting better. Last year, a breakout season in the new Tony Bazella system, which was more up-tempo, fit to her style a little bit better, gave her more freedom to create. Oh, by the way, she's also a really good student. Tonight's academic Ambitions presented by SoFi focuses on the development of Shadeen Samuels throughout her career, but a tremendous student athlete. And uh, Tony Bazella told us he, she just embodies that phrase on and off the court. Right, and she's also, wow, she's skied up for that rebound. She is also <laughs> a finalist for the Lowe's Senior Class Award, one of the top 30 seniors. That award looks at a combination of your play, your commitment to the community, your success in the classroom. So Shadeen Samuel is really a shining example for Tony Bazella's program. Marquette has nine turnovers. Seton Hall with 11 points off those nine turnovers. Lott tries a three, way off the mark. What can Marquette do differently to end this half to get something going? Well, I think they have to find some more creative ways to get Selena Lott open, run her off with some more screens, and then, like I said, take advantage of that face guard. Other people will be open as Jordan King gets whistled for an offensive foul. 7-0 run for the Pirates. 
Well, it's been a puzzling first half for Marquette. Who now subs in Narell Lubo, the freshman. And Matt, this Marquette team, they need to get some easy ones. They need to rebound. They need to do a little bit more of what Seton Hall is doing, creating some turnovers on that end for easier runouts because right now they're having a really tough time in the half court. Lubo doing a really nice job of getting into the passing lane and wins it back for Marquette, who will now face some full court pressure. You know, the interesting thing is the Pirates have really only used a full court press with Park Lane. It hasn't been a whole team set. Right, it's just been a little full court coverage, putting some pressure on the freshman king. And the Pirates pressed the majority of that first meeting. And Tony Bazella took ownership and said, I think we pressed too much. We allowed Marquette to break through it. So he was going to pick and choose more in this one when they were going to use that full court pressure. Desiree Elmore thought she got all ball there, and certainly by the naked eye, it did look like it. That's her second foul. It sends Altia Anderson to the line. Anderson had 11 points, along with four steals and a block in the last meeting against Marquette, against uh, Seton Hall, rather. Perhaps she can be the one to give them a spark with Lott being defended heavily in this first half. Well, this is a team who is really successful down low. And so far today, they only have six points in the paint combined to 16 for Seton Hall. They've done the majority of their damage from the free throw line, but I'd like to see them really work down into their forwards a little bit more. Seton Hall doing a really nice job of taking away the strengths of Marquette. Five minutes to go in the half. Funis buries the elbow J. Everyone just seems confident right now, Matt, on this Pirates team. They're shooting better than 50%. Everyone is stepping up. Lot really fighting to get that pass. Dumps it down to Lubo. And it goes off the foot of Spingola. Back to the Pirates. 11 turnovers. And that's just a frustrating one because that was a nice back cut by Lubo. She was wide open. That should have been an easy layup and just couldn't corral the pass in. Seton Hall forces the second most turnovers in the conference behind only DePaul. And tonight it's led to a lot of offensive opportunities. Three second violation goes against Funis. Back to Marquette. <laughs> Tony, I think. The always animated Tony Bazella. <laughs> never, uh, never shy to show emotion. I think he's saying, call it on both ends. But Joe Bazzilli, tough to argue with him. One of the top officials in the nation. Final fours, national championships. Foul off the ball. <laughs> Goes against Shadeen Samuels, her first. Park Lane comes out. She's played really well in this first half. No surprise there. Her last five games have been some of the best in the country. 25 turnovers, sorry, 25 assists to just four turnovers for the freshman point guard. You see her out there, she's so much tinier than everyone else. Samuels into the passing lane all the way to the rack. And that's just a lazy pass from Marquette against probably the player, maybe the best player in the league in terms of getting in passing lanes. That is a dangerous spot to let Shadeen Samuels get the ball. No field goals for Marquette over the last four and a half minutes. A lazy pass for Marquette, telegraphed, no speed on it, right into the hands of Shadeen 
Samuels, that right there is what she does best. Get in passing lanes, get out and run. Hard to match the foot speed of Shadeen Samuels in transition. An array of turnovers early for the Golden Eagles. A 21-6 run for the Pirates. Anderson. Lewis fighting for it into the hands of Lou Bow and through contact had to have that one. Those are some of the little things Marquette needs right now to get back into this game. Offensive boards, creating some turnovers for easy looks. They've gotten to the free throw line. They need some easier ones. Smith walled off by Spingola. Now into the hands of Lewis. Nowhere to go. Three to shoot. Long heave from Jackson. Almost went in. And now Spingola into the front court. And Locke pulls it back out for Lugo. That time they tried to get out, rebounded and run, but only two players were down there. Selena Lott and Spingola. See how crowded it is, Matt. They need better spacing. Selena Lott drove in, and her four teammates were right around. Back-to-back -back buckets for the freshman, Nural Lubo. 13-point game, two and a half left in the first half. And a timeout taken by Tony Bazella. Ah, Domino's. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, we'll join Rob Stone in our L.A. studio as players around the Big East share who their greatest female influences in sports are. Plus, Kim and I will talk Seton Hall defense. And boy, have they been impressive in this first half. Big East College Hoops sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Glad to have you with us on this Friday night in South Orange and what a surprise in the first half a 13 point lead for a Seton Hall team that has not beaten Marquette since 2016. Well I've seen glimpses of this Seton Hall team I've had them a bunch they've just been inconsistent at times but when they're shooting the ball well when they're turning you over they're fully dialed in this is a really talented Pirates team. Lubo has made the last two buckets for Marquette into Taylor and a nice take from the freshman there you go I'd like to see them really work that ball inside space it out use lot as a decoy get her out of position while they're face guarding her Cameron Taylor can really finish well inside off balance jumper from Lewis she can't miss tonight she did miss one we'll give her one miss five of six from the fields still three of three from deep and that stops a 6-0 Marquette run. Spingola, Taylor, too heavy. Really impressed with Femi Funis tonight, Matt, and the lift she has brought. Ooh, Park Lane back. takes a big shot from Lubo. Like crashing into the padding underneath the hoop. Park Lane. I don't think there was anything intentional intentional about that one, Matt, but it was just a tough hit, almost an elbow to the face there, a little push from behind. You look at the difference in size right now between Park Lane and Lubo, who are standing next to each other. Lubo is 5'10 and very strong with the basketball. Park Lane is barely 5'8. Easily the smallest player on the floor against any team in the Big East. But she can pack a punch. It hasn't bothered her one bit. I think she's been 
underrated a bit, as we mentioned before. Last five games, 25 assists, four turnovers as a freshman. Your team has won four of five. Lewis knocks down another triple, her fourth. Alexis Lewis cashing out from three tonight, Matt. Four from four, you cannot lose her, especially on a baseline out of bounds play where they are specifically diagramming something up to get her a shot. Lot off the screen. Anderson now going to work on Funis off the mark. And guess who's there? Lewis picks it up. And again, Matt, just the spacing is not there for Marquette right now. Altia Anderson didn't have a lot of space to work with on that move because her teammates were all crowding the paint. Pirates up 16. Seven second differential between game and shot clock. Park Lane whistled for the walk. Alexis Lewis, four of four from deep. That time doing a great job of reading where the defense went, faking them out a little bit, coming right over the top of that screen. And again, that was a major focus of Marquette's shoot around today, was any time 10, Alexis Lewis is coming off of the screen. You need to go over the top of that because of how well she could shoot the three. And that time they did not. Less than 10 seconds left in the first half. Lot right to the lane and just missed a chance at a three point play. Selena Lot, it's been a frustrating first half for her. So much pressure on her, but this time just. Taking her time on the dribble, weaving through a couple defenders. I'd like to see them do more of that, clear it out a little bit more. We've talked about the spacing, but give her some more room. Isolate her on one side and let her take it off the dribble because if she doesn't have the ball, it's hard for her to get open because of the face guard. That was the third foul on Alesh, who literally just checked in after picking up two quick ones in the first quarter. So now she has three. Just three minutes for her in her first career start, but to be honest, they haven't needed to rely on her with how it's gone so far, Matt. Lot off the mark. Four seconds left. Up to Jackson. And it's tipped away, and that is how we end the first half. A 15-point lead for the Seton Hall Pirates. Alexis Lewis with 18. Our score at halftime, Seton Hall 40, Marquette 25. Coming up next, Rob Stone will feature players from around the Big East sharing their greatest female influence. Plus, Kim and I will be right back to examine the first half of Seton Hall Marquette.
Welcome to the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. We're at the break. Rob Stone with you in our Los Angeles studio. We'll get you back out to the game in a moment. But first, the 34th annual National Girls and Women in Sports Day recently took place. It's a celebration that inspires girls and women to play and be active and to realize their full power. In honor of this day, we asked basketball players from around the Big East who their greatest female influence has been in sports. And the answers were inspiring. My greatest female influence in sports would be my older sister. She is a basketball player as well, and she plays at the collegiate level. And I also was able to always look up to her and admire her as a role model. She's faced a lot of adversity through the sport, so just having that connection with her has been really great. Serena Williams, um, she's opened up so many doors for women just in how she carries herself and like all the things that she has brought to her game in tennis, and even endorsements and all the commercials and opportunities she's opened for women. I think that would have to be Skylar Diggins. Just I love how um, she embodies herself as a woman and how she plays hard and she never steps down to anything. I really enjoy Sydney LaRue from the U.S. Women's National Team. I just actually watched her um, video series on her having a child and coming back from that. So I think just I like how she has pursued and be a great leader on her team as well as the mother. Letitia Heidemann because just because we knew each other for however many years and seeing her go to the league is just amazing. Allison Felix and Serena Williams. Those women are just amazing in the things that they do. They just continue to pave the way for myself and as a basketball player athletes such as Maya Moore, Della Don, because I kind of try to mimic their style of play. On, on the court and off the court, they're just great women to look up to. I really hope to be just like them one day and all their success and also give back to the sport that they've played in. Just some tremendous influences for all of those players. And we'll get you back out to the game in the second half right after the break.
smiles in New Jersey for the Pirate faithful. 40 to 25 lead over the number two team in the conference as we welcome you back inside Walsh Gymnasium. Matt Schumacher, Kim Adams with you. Kim, you couldn't ask for much more if you're Tony Bazella. They have been stifling against one of the best offenses in the country. Yeah, and they've had the balance. They've gotten it done on both ends. They're shooting 53% from the floor. They forced 12 turnovers for Marquette in the first half, and they're getting scoring. They're knocking down shots, which they've been streaky with at times throughout the season. So, so far, they've put together a great 20 minutes. Now, how can they put together a second 20-minute period here? We'll find out soon. One thing that has been consistent for them in this first half, defense, 12 turnovers forced for Seton Hall. 12 turnovers leading to 11 fast break points, and they've just been so active. Everyone has hands up, hands in passing lanes. You can tell that they came out with a defensive-minded approach, and it's really been from everyone. It hasn't just been one player. Everyone is getting steals. Shadeen Samuels thrives in getting in those passing lanes. But everything they have done so far has been generated by that energy on the defensive end. Our first half stats are sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee Marquette Ofer from downtown. The big stat that jumps out to me, Kim Adams, Pirates 11 assists. Marquette, who is eighth in the country with 19 per game, just one. And they've been stagnant offensively. I think they've gotten frustrated by that high pressure. They have been face guarding Selene a lot, and the team hasn't adjusted well. But Coach Duffy said this is a team who can bounce back as well as any team that she has been a part of. So they have a big 20-minute window ahead of them, Matt. They have a big hill to climb, 15-point deficit. Fans here in Walsh Gymnasium loving the action from the Pirates. We'll be right back with the second half after this.
Welcome back to New Jersey. Seton Hall Pirates on top of the Marquette Golden Eagles. 40 to 25 postseason implications on the line. And there are your leaders right now for Marquette. Selena Lott, seven of her nine points coming from the charity strike. They have got to find a way to get her going. Meanwhile, Alexis Lewis has had everything going. Four for four from downtown and has missed just one jumper all night. Well, Marquette is going to have to adjust their coverage on her. You cannot let her get any space at the rate that she is knocking down threes. Seton Hall 10 and 1 this season when leading at the halftime break. Fast starts are so crucial to them because I've seen them have a couple games where they've been down big and they've come back. At the times they've won those games, like Villanova, at times they've come up short in those comebacks. So this is a much respected and welcomed start for Tony Bazella's team. See it now, Spingola is basically face guarding Lewis almost, just like they're doing to Selena Lott on the other end. Elmore with five. Right into the lane. The runner just a bit heavy and into the hands of Spingola. Spingola is a player who needs to get going for them, Matt. Wasn't much of a factor in that first half. One of five shooting. She is the top three-point shooter in the conference. They have to find a way to get her some looks from three. And an offensive foul goes against Jordan King. That's the second charge drawn by Desiree Elmore tonight. And now Marquette picks up in the full court pressure. Here's some adjustments for Coach Duffy. Make it a little bit harder for Seton Hall to get into that half-court set. Force some turnovers for easy runouts. Jordan King now with three fouls. Talk about Marquette trying to generate some easy runouts. Just two fast break points for them in that first half compared to Seton Hall's 11. When we talked about transition defense being a big key in this one, but Seton Hall really hasn't had to even defend in the transition because Marquette hasn't been able to get out and run. Samuels. Elmore backing down Van Clunen. Alesh. You can see they're looking to push the pace a little bit more, even if it's not a primary fast break, but more of a secondary fast break. Get into the offense sooner. Silky hook from Van Clunen. They were outscored in the paint 20 to 10 in the first half. Samuels picks up the loose ball and finishes. Seton Hall still face guarding Selena Lott. This time it is Shadeen Samuels. They've had a couple different players on that assignment today. Anderson rises. Lewis hauls it down. Park Lane. Well, she can get it going in a flash. Now driving. Kick out to Lewis. Why not? Alexis Lewis can thank her freshman point guard for that. Tony Bazella is amped up over that play, but that was completely Lauren Park Lane getting into the paint, two foot jump stop, getting some contact and finding her teammate. Lauren Park Lane with five assists. And that's how just kind of a little shuffle pass. They were right next to each other. Shadeen Samuels usually in the right place at the right time. And then that time just weaving through the defense. Anytime you can get a point guard in the lane, two feet in the lane, and spacing is good, good things tend to happen. And that time Alexis Lewis knocking down her fifth three-pointer of the game. She still has not missed from deep. Third foul on Desiree Elmore. So now... Seton Hall in a bit of foul trouble. Elmore with three and Alesh with three. Van Clunen picks it up and a chance at the three-point play. Rebounding is this team's specialty. And that's one way to get yourself back into the ball game. And this is where that young team 
really needs the energy of a player like Lauren Van Cloonen, and we see her bringing that energy, hyping her teammates up. We mentioned really three players that played significant roles on last year's championship team. Her, Selena Lott, and Izzy Spingola. And times like this, when you're down, when there's adversity, they need to show some character and have their younger teammates feeling confidence brimming through them. Into the hands of Lott, who draws the foul. And that is the fourth on Alexia Alesh. Alexia Alesh just can't stay out. Actually, they are going to leave her out, despite it being her fourth foul. Going to take a little, I'd say, a pretty big gamble there. 17 minutes left in the game. Got her first career start tonight and had two quick ones in the first three minutes. Taylor off the glass. And that was quick to being Alesha's fifth foul there. Nice job by the freshman Taylor taking it right at her. Good punch out of the break from Arcata. 6 0 run for the Golden Eagles. Trying to dump it down to Samuels, and it's an offensive foul. That is her third. And now Tony Bazella has some decision making to do. And he sits a lash now who has four. Meanwhile, Elmore and Samuel stay out with three. And actually, he just sent Elmore to the bench as well. Taylor, heavy, Spingola, second chance for King. And it's off the mark. Well, that's a, almost the luxury that Coach Bazella has this season. He has some depth. So if one or two of your key rotational players are in foul trouble, there's a couple people who can come in and contribute. Lewis on the loose ball. She has 21 tonight. Lewis' hands are just, if you touched them right now, your hand would just burn <laughs> into a crisp. She is 9 of 10 from the floor. Getting very close to a season high. Spingola on the hesitation. Knocks it down from the elbow. Marquette looking better offensively, but now they need to respond on the defensive end as well. And Jackson goes right to the cup to draw a foul. And she will head to the line for two shots. And that's something Coach Bazella talked to us about. He talked about the importance of transition defense, which, as we mentioned, they didn't need to do much of in the first half. But he said very important coming out of the locker room and in that third quarter because that was that couple-minute span in the first meeting where they just got blown out a 24-4 to run over eight minutes, the difference in the first meeting between these two. Jackson missed them both, but Funis hauls down the board. Again, Funis has provided a big impact off the bench. Rebounding, a little bit of scoring. Park Lane left it off the front end, and Van Clunen there to clean it up. Park Lane getting into the cookie jar, and back to Funis. Right on cue, Funis, she, we were listing all that she'd done. I don't know if she'd gotten a steal yet, but she wanted to make sure she checked that box as well. 16 turnovers for Marquette. Seton Hall has great spacing offensively today. At times, I think they could get a little crowded when they have Omar and Samuels working the paint, but today, beautiful job with spacing. Van Clunen wide open on the entry pass. Off the mark. Picked up by Samuels. And now here comes Shadeen with a full head of steam. Kick out to Jackson. And Samuels there for the offensive board. Jackson, a second opportunity. And right now the Pirates 
it, it's simple. They're outworking Marquette. They are going after loose balls. They're attacking the offensive glass. And to be honest, Marquette looks a little tired to me right now. They're not as deep as Seton Hall. Their players look a little winded. Morata out to Spingola. Van Clunen fighting for it. And the hook rolls down. Van Clunen continues to really be the main source of energy for this Marquette team right now. Yes. Scoring. Going after rebound. Nine rebounds. points, five boards. They call her the matriarch of Marquette women's basketball. And they need more Van Clunen to climb back into this one. Seton Hall, 49, Marquette, 37. Saturday. It's still on top big here in the second half, 49-37. The second annual Seton Hall versus Cancer Auction recently concluded and to raise money and awareness in the fight against cancer, Seton Hall auctioned off the opportunity to put the name of a loved one on the back of the shooting shirts for tonight's game. All proceeds benefit the K. Yao Fund. It is the K. Yao play for K game. And you see a lot of the Seton Hall players Rocking the pink kicks. It's always a really special time across men's and women's basketball. A lot of teams doing some events as Lauren Van Clunen, the junior, trying to will her team back into this one. Injecting some energy on the low block. Big time power move, power dribble, power finish, absorbing the contact. And we've talked about she's really brought the energy all of the second half, and now it looks like her teammates may be starting to respond and feed off of that. That's her second or third three-point play opportunity in this game. So can Hall. they get it done on the defensive end? Because we've said it, they have looked a little bit better offensively in this half, but they haven't consistently been able to get stopped. Seton Hall has just been uber efficient. 14 assists on 20 made field goals. They made it a bit tougher on Marquette on the other end. And it's a block underneath on Claire Cases. 
And that's her second personal. Fourth on Marquette this quarter. And a travel on Desiree Elmore gives it back to the Golden Eagles. Chance to make this a single-digit game for the first time since early in the second quarter. Seton Hall going zone now. 2-3 zone. Spindola. Short. Van Clunen fighting for it, and another offensive board for the senior. Doing it all tonight for the Golden Eagles. And this was something they worked on in shoot around as well, being ready when that zone came, knowing what they were going into. Long two, and Van Clunen sinks it. Eight point game. Seton Hall playing without Shadeen Samuels right now, who has three fouls. She's waiting to check in. Jackson on the dribble drop. Jackson scoops to the hoop and rattles it down. I was just going to say, Marquette has done a very good job this possession of containing ball handlers. That time with a couple seconds left on the shot clock. Maya Jackson able to turn that corner against the post player. Just staying determined as the shot clock ticked down to zero on that one, Matt. MJ-esque for Maya Jackson. I thought that was a Matt Schumacher special. I've seen you at the park or the <laughs> Butler Rec Center getting buckets on fellow track athletes. Right. I was a spot up three kind of guy. Not you, though. You could get to the rack in your day. That was my, I love getting to the rack. And then I started to knock down threes at a high rate as well. But I was always a okay. slasher. Ten-point deficit for Marquette. Selena Lott has just one made field goal tonight. All of her points, for the most part, have come from the free throw line. They include in a miss. Park Lane draws the foul on Capus. That's her third. And I still think the Marquette offense just continues to be a little bit too stagnant. It's almost like they're not really sure what to do because Lott isn't able to do what she wants tonight because of that face guarding. Her teammates need to do a better job of moving without the ball. Just three assists for the Golden Stop. Eagles. Lauren Park Lane. <laughs> Going to do it all freshman for the Seton Hall team tonight. Five assists. Two turnovers. That's now six straight games, averaging at least five assists. Sunday on Fox, catch the best bowlers in the world as they go head-to-head -head in the PBA Tournament of Champions. The action starts Sunday at 5 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. You love that bowling. <laughs> that was quite an outfit and a, quite a hairstyle. By that bowler in the middle, gotta he's give got the people it going what, on. What they want, Kim Adams. He clearly has the look good, play good, or bowl good <laughs> thing down pat. Lot fighting to get open, could not. Inside to Murata, through contact. That was a solid post up by Murata. Nice job of feeding it inside of her where she had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Able to get her defender deep inside the paint and make her move. Jackson pulls it out, defended by Lott. Stop it, pop. And into the hands of Selena Lott. And this is where you want to run that shot clock down, get a high percentage look, get a bucket, and get some momentum heading into the fourth quarter. Cut it to single digits. Lott driving offhand, no second chance, draws a foul. And now she has a chance to get her first point of the half at the free throw line. And that is where she's made her living tonight. Seven of her nine points have come from the charity strike. I am surprised they went that early 
in the possession. As we mentioned, the ball goes well here. If she makes it or Seton Hall gets a rebound, they will now have a chance to have the last possession of this quarter. postseason implications and right now DePaul is trailing St. John's so you've got the top two teams in the league trailing on the road right now Seton Hall and St. John's tied for fourth in the conference coming into the weekend Lewis no Samuels draws the foul on the offensive board That's the second on Altia Anderson. And again, you go back to Marquette choosing to shoot with 17 seconds left instead of running down the shot clock. And now Shadeen Samuels gets a chance for two more before the end of the quarter. Quietly putting together a terrific night. So much talk about Lewis because of how hot she shot the basketball, but Samuels. Five for ten from the floor, six rebounds, five assists, and now 15 points for the senior. He's doing it all. Lot with time expiring. Kick out to King. And Seton Hall enters the fourth quarter with a 10-point lead on a team they have not beaten since March 2016. The Pirates open to close this out at home. Big East College Hoops is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Three quarters down at Walsh Gymnasium. Marquette started chipping away a little bit early in the second half. Got five back in the third quarter. Big reason why partner Lauren Van Clunen. All right, she really came alive, brought the energy on the glass, scoring. She has 13 points on six of nine shooting. She's really been a huge spark for them, but they're going to need more. What Marquette is really missing tonight is that third score. Van Clunen has 13. Selena Lott has 11. As you mentioned, just one field goal, though, nine free throws. After that, nobody has more than five points. They need to start to identify some people who can knock down some buckets. Izzy Spingola averages 11.
She only has four tonight, two of eight shooting. See if they can get her going a little bit in this final 10. 11 of Van Koonen's 13 points coming in the third quarter. She now has averaged 13 points in the last five games. Lewis on the turnaround, nothing but nylon. And Lewis now with 25 leads all scorers. What an efficient 25 as well. 10 of 12 from the field, five of five from three. Great footwork from Taylor, <laughs> avoiding the foul and getting the bucket. I'd like to see Marquette go inside every single possession. They've had success with Van Cloonen. Taylor has shown the ability to finish well. Murata has shown the ability to finish well. I would keep feeding inside the paint. Selena Lott's lone field goal came with 5.51 left in the first quarter. It was a layup. Seton Hall has defended her as well as anyone in the country has all year. Well, Tony Bedella said their plan was to start face guarding her. He didn't anticipate doing it for the full game, but boy, has it worked well. It's not only frustrated her, but it's really gotten the entire Marquette offense out of sync. Spingola has just not been on tonight. Third chance doesn't go down. And it goes out of bounds. And back to Seton Hall. And interesting to note, Matt, after those big-time numbers for Van Cloonen, she is now on the bench to start this fourth quarter. I guess getting a little breather here. I wouldn't leave her on the bench for too much longer. Especially with how much Marquette has struggled to shoot from the perimeter tonight. They're 0 for 8 from downtown. And they're typically a very good three-point shooting team. Third in the conference, shooting over 35% this season. Right, it's not a huge part of their offense, really. It's just Selena Lott and Spingola who can shoot it consistently from three. But you're right, they haven't been able to get that inside-outside balance that Seton Hall has. Lott short on the runner. Taylor with the putback, and the freshman makes it a single-digit deficit again for Marquette. I like her game. We mentioned in that first meeting, 23 and 11 against Seton Hall. I like her energy, her size, her footwork around the rim. She can really run, as we can see now. Lot coming up a little bit hobbly after that last drive from Jackson. Lot trying to get open. Defended by Jackson. And just putting the clamps on Lot right now, but you're right, she is grimacing a bit. Looks like her ankle. Great feed to Spingola, goes out of bounds, and they said it went off Spingola. A lot of contact, no foul called, and back to the Pirates. And still no sign of Lauren Van Cloonen. Ooh, a lot of oh, contact. Wow. They might want to take a look at that one potentially. Where Kafis checks in for Marquette. Seton Hall, no points over the last two minutes of change. Eight point game. Warren Van Cleman still on the bench for Marquette. Elmore draws a foul. will go to the scorer's table. Got it. three minutes of rest to start the fourth quarter. It was huge for them in the third, scoring 11 of her 13 points. Helped Marquette to that five-point advantage in the third quarter. And that was a solid few minutes by Cameron Taylor, the freshman there, coming in in relief. Eight points, three rebounds on the night in just 13 minutes. The future is bright for Marquette. You look at the talent of this freshman class, but also the experience that they're getting in their first season on campus. Right, and obviously have a tremendous new coach 
at the helm really enjoyed watching her coach and shoot around today. She was always making sure they were completely focused and dialed in. King pull up rattles down. Jackson walled off by Kafis. Samuels defended by Murata. Out to Elmore. And Samuels hunts down the board. She is just everywhere on that offensive glass mat. Tough take, and Elmore draws the foul. It's a block on Murata. And back to the line goes Desiree Elmore. Elmore is really the one player that hasn't been able to get it going for Seton Hall today. No field goals, two points, but she continues to be on the attack. Drawing the blocking foul on that one. In her second season after transferring from Syracuse, Tony Bazell has said, she's one of my favorite players that I've ever coached at Seton Hall. He's been here now six and a half years. But thinks that her ceiling is still very high. The potential for growth still there for Elmore who has another season of eligibility here at, Sir, at uh, Seton Hall. Good flash from Murata. Walled off by Elmore, who comes away with it. How about that help defense, though, by Alexis Lewis there, right on the spot, beating Chloe Murata, the reason she wasn't able to get an easy layup. Excellent rotation. Jackson into the cookie jar. Bobby's on the deck. Elmore up to Jackson. This is interesting because today, both in shoot-arounds and in warm-ups for Seton Hall, we noticed that they were pretty quiet. And the first her energy picks. was down. But I think they were just getting focused for this one because whatever high energy we didn't see in warm-ups, they have absolutely brought it into this game. They've done it from the start. They continue to get things done on the defensive end, diving for loose balls. Seton Hall looking to close this one out at home.
Alexis Lewis came out red hot to start, and she has not slowed down. 25 points for the transfer out of Iona College. That leads all scorers. She still hasn't missed from three either, but Shadeen Samuels really putting together a complete game. 17 points, seven rebounds, six assists, has relentlessly attacked the rim, attacked the glass. Lauren Van Cluden, though, 11 of her 13 points came in that third quarter looking to spark a little bit of a run for her Golden Eagles team. But it's been Seton Hall defense. That has been the story of the night. They have forced 18 Marquette turnovers. Look at them diving on the ground, getting every single 50-50 ball. The energy has just been at an incredible amount from start to this exact moment of the game. And that's why they're in a pretty good position to win this one. 6-0 run for the Pirates. Four Marquette turnovers of, over the last two and a half. Down to Taylor, going to work on Elmore. Great defense, jump ball, and it'll stay here. Yeah, Matt, you said a great defense. They have been locked in on their execution of the scout. They have been face guarding Selena a lot the entire time, and they have known when they're collapsing and when they're helping, like they did on that possession. They included Pitt. Guess who? Lauren Park Lane. Lauren Park Lane with the pick six. Van Clunen brought the ball down way too low. Little Lauren Park Lane, LPL with the steal, running it all the way back for a layup. And Jackson almost got another one, but instead whistled for the foul. Defense to offense, that's been the story tonight for the Pirates, up big, 67-51. 4.44 left in the fourth. Are you stuck with a low credit? Big East College Hoops is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. A huge College Hoops doubleheader comes your way tomorrow on Fox First. Cassius Winston leads number 16 Michigan State 
against rival Michigan at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Then it's a Big East showdown as Miles Powell and number 12 Seton Hall battle number 10 Nova at 2.30. Both games also available on the Fox Sports app. And if, uh, if you're on your mobile device, Kim Adams, tune in to the pregame show, Big East Shootaround, 1 Eastern on Twitter, live from Wells Fargo Arena. I will definitely try to do that. I'm heading to your stomping grounds, Indianapolis, tomorrow, Hinkle Fieldhouse on Sunday. Lauren Van Cloonan continues to be the engine for this Golden Eagles team. Look well, at yeah, turnovers has been the story tonight, right? 21 points for Seton Hall, 19 Marquette turnovers. And they've outscored Marquette in fast break points, 17 to 2. Elmore, the kick out to Lewis. Into the hands of Elmore, way off the mark. Samuels a third opportunity, no. And finally, Spingola comes away with it. Isn't that interesting to note as well? Marquette without a three here. Our terrific stats crew is telling us it's been more than three years since the Golden Eagles had a game where they did not hit a three. And they've just been blitzed defensively by Seton Hall. You look at Marquette. This year, they've been one of the most efficient teams in the country, averaging 19 assists per game. Today, they have just five. And it's been a night of frustration for the Golden Eagles, who came in just two games behind DePaul in the standings. And that is the fifth foul on Cameron Taylor after the referees get together. And now they will check the monitor to make sure there was nothing flagrant. Here's another look. Oh, yeah, they're going to look at that elbow there to the face of Shadeen Samuels. So they will determine if that's going to be an intentional foul, which means contact was excessive or if they're going to just deem it a common foul as it is now looks like they have made a decision and it looks like they're keeping it a common foul it did look like there was a lot of force on that elbow Tony Bazella can't believe it Shadeen Samuels is one tough senior. Tony Bazella told us over this last stretch of success for Samuels, where she's been averaging over 20 points per game in the last four, it's been a change in her mental state. She's in a really good state of mind right now. Dealing with a lot of nagging injuries, but has decided to overcome those mentally just by changing her attitude, and it's changed her performance. And Lewis heaves a three. It's all falling tonight for Lewis, who now has 28, and that's a season high. Yeah, that's something that has not changed in this game, that Alexis Lewis' ability to knock down from three. She has been incredible, six of seven from deep. Senior making the most of her one year of eligibility for the Pirates, the Iona transfer, New Rochelle, New York, out of the MAC. That's a shot you see in the backyard in New Rochelle. Absolutely. That's my hood. A little white plate from the <laughs> throw. Plenty of battles there. Mount Vernon, Austining, where Shadeen Samuels is from. Samuels on the drive, whistled for the walk. 17 point lead, the biggest of the night for Seton Hall with under three minutes to play. And that the biggest question I had for the Seton Hall team coming in was consistency. Playing a complete game. They've had times where they played a good first half or a good second half. But tonight we saw a complete 40-minute effort here. Anderson good on the jumper. If Seton Hall can hang on here, they will have won five of their last six games. Positioning themselves really well in the final month of the Big East regular season. And this is arguably the toughest weekend, right? You have DePaul, you have Marquette, who are one and two in the standings right now. So you have to like at least stealing one win this weekend. Guaranteed, if you could close out here, maybe a second on Sunday. Mark Lane kicks it out with one to shoot. Heaved by Jackson. And it's a shot clock violation. 
In the first meeting that Seton Hall had with Marquette and DePaul, they lost those by an average of 20 points. And now they're coming away with a double-digit lead over Marquette with two minutes left. And this is a Marquette team that's projected to be a nine seed in the NCAA tournament. This is a huge potential win for Seton Hall. All right, Marquette only has five losses on the entire season, 17 and five. Marotta, deep two. Rebound, Altia Anderson. Just backing down on the post. Marotta heavy again. Fights for another board. And it's a jump ball. And it'll go back to the Pirates. Seton Hall has lost seven straight to Marquette by an average of 27 points per game. This is a mega statement from Tony Bazella's team. Elmore, little dipsy do, got it to go. What's impressive about Elmore is she just continues to go 100%. One of nine shooting for her. That was actually her first field goal of the game, but you wouldn't know it because she is playing with extreme energy, even as she's having a tough night shooting-wise. She does have seven rebounds. Now, Shadeen Samuels will check out. As Phoebe Funis comes in, and a round of applause for Samuels and Elmore. Alesh coming back in. Samuels Knight, 17 points on 6 of 12, 8 boards, 6 assists. Senior really recognizing, you know, this is it. This is the last few weeks, last few games here has completely elevated her play in the last month. And Tony Bazella told us with Shadeen. He's seen a real sense of senior leadership. She's made it more about the team. You know, last year she had a real individual breakout, but the team struggled. This year, she understands it's her last opportunity to help this program to make a deep run in the Big East Tournament. Boy, come away with a win like this. In the top four in the conference, you could potentially see Seton Hall in the first round bye which they have not had since 2015. Right, and she's kind of a soft-spoken kid when you talk to her as, as much of a, as a beast she is on the floor, but you're right, you can see it and shoot around, telling players where to go, where they can be better. A projected third-round draft pick in the WNBA draft, which will be later in April. Say that may even rise based on what she's playing <laughs> yeah, right she now. It's playing really, like this. really night and day with how she's playing in the last month. It's been a foul underneath. Uh, Funis. Talk about WNBA in this game. You have Natisha Heideman, who graduated from Marquette last year, who had a significant role with the Connecticut Sun this past season playing in the WNBA Finals. I just saw yesterday that she's re-signed with the Connecticut Sun, so a lot going on for that incredible Marquette senior class from last year. Now, Tia Anderson, of course, was an underclassman on a lot of those great runs with Natisha Heideman, now Isaiah Blockton. Now getting a chance to really perform and shine in her senior season. Seton Hall up 12, shot clock turned off. And the Pirates will come away with their fifth win in the last six games. And that does it from New Jersey. The Pirates' first win over Marquette since March 6, 2016. Impressive for 40 minutes, Matt. Impressive on both ends. We talked about the defense. It all started with that forcing 21 Marquette turnovers and then shooting 48% on the night on the other end.
That is a happy head coach, Tony Bazella, victorious by double figures. We'll be back to wrap it up from Seton Hall after this. Welcome back to South Orange. The Pirates victorious in a massive win over the Golden Eagles, 72-60. It's the first win for Seton Hall over Marquette since March 6, 2016. Matt Schumacher, Kim Adams with you. And Kim, it really comes down to defense. Seton Hall stifled Marquette tonight. Stifling is a perfect word. I was going to use it well. You took it right from me. <laughs> Great but minds it, think alike. It was a full 40 minutes. They held Marquette to 38% shooting, 21 turnovers, which led to 24 points off of turnovers. And Marquette only hit one three in the game. It was just incredible pressure, incredible execution of their scout. They face guarded Selena Lott the entire night. And they were able to just have tremendous ball pressure to force a lot of these turnovers. It was the energy to me that stood out the most about Seton Hall. They just came out and blitzed Marquette each and every quarter. And Tony Bazella told us that he needed to see that energy. Yeah. He needed to see transition defense, which would lead to transition buckets. And, and he couldn't have written it up any better tonight for the Pirates. Right. The energy has been inconsistent, as has their shooting. But that was not the case tonight for Alexis Lewis, who finishes with a career-high 28 points, 6 of 7 for 3, nearly a double-double, 8 rebounds. She was absolutely lethal from behind the arc. Anything she touched turned to gold tonight, Matt. Alexis Lewis, as you said, a career-high 28 points. A big reason why Seton Hall has now won five out of their last six. This is a team who has legitimate opportunity to get a first round bye in the Big East tournament, which would be their first since 2015. Your biggest takeaway for Seton Hall tonight. Seton Hall could be a top team in this conference when they play consistently for 40 minutes like that, when they knock down threes. Don't forget, they're also fighting to get into the NCAAs, Matt. Seton Hall takes down Marquette for the first time since March 6, 2016. That came in Chicago at the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. That's where Seton Hall hopes to make a deep run in March. 72-60, Seton Hall.